Hey, what's up everyone, Ollie here. So I've shown myself using the iPad as a secondary display multiple times on Instagram and YouTube videos and stuff like that. And I also showed it in my 2020 productivity workspace setup video. But I'm still getting questions about it. I'm still getting asked, how is it set up? Um, you know, what have I done to get it all set up and how they can do it themselves. So I wanted to basically just sort of run through that in this video. So first of all, you're going to need a Mac and an iPad, of course. Um, I'm sure there are ways to do it with PC, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. I'm only going to be using Apple's sidecar functionality, they like to call it, and that only works between a Mac and an iPad. You need to make sure your Mac is updated to macOS Catalina, and you need to make sure your iPad is updated to iOS 13. Those two versions of software are what makes sidecar work. Both devices need to be signed in to the same iCloud account. You can't use someone else's iPad or someone else's Mac. You have to make sure you're signed into the same iCloud account across both devices. It does work wirelessly, but for it to work wirelessly well, obviously the closer your device is, the better. Apple recommend less than 10 meters. Um, you know, it just makes sense really because obviously you're transmitting um, display information to another device but you can use it over USB and I would actually recommend using it over USB mainly because you obviously have a more dedicated wired connection and your iPad is always kept charged. So, you know, you don't have to worry about your iPad just suddenly dying out because you can't actually see your battery percentage whilst you're using sidecar you can go back to the home screen on your ipad and check it but you know you can't see it whilst it's actually connected up to your mac once you've got it all set up you hit the display preferences in the toolbar at the top and you should see an option to connect to your ipad once you've done that you're all connected up and it really is as simple as that. You can use some gestures on the iPad when it's connected up using sidecar. Um, the most useful one is of course scrolling, but I end up using my mouse anyway because that's the whole point of having it as a secondary display so that your hands are basically just kept on your mouse and keyboard and yeah you can just you know use your ipad as secondary display there's no point reaching up all the way to to scroll or whatever else you know um you know it's just better to use a mouse i think you can drag and drop windows to the ipad itself but you can also use the green traffic light icon on any window and automatically move that window over to the ipad which i think is a much easier way of doing it because it moves it over and makes it full screen on the ipad when it comes to use cases, you know, you can use it to basically keep an eye on your to-do list, reference a document, reference a design, uh, use it as a window for Final Cut Pro so you can preview your footage, um, or you can use it, you know, to watch YouTube and, and Netflix or whatever else it may be. I personally very much like using it to watch, you know, a TV show or movie in the background whilst I'm working. When it comes to how I've got it mounted, I use a tablet arm from Lamical. I think that's how you say their name. I probably butchered it. But anyway, this tablet arm is, is okay for what it, for what it is and for the price it goes for you know i bought it for 17 pounds or 23 dollars you can get it on amazon i'll leave a link to it down below but yeah it's it's not the highest quality thing in the world but it works and it holds the ipad with ease um, and I have the 11 inch iPad. If you have the larger 12.9 inch iPad Pro or something like that, it should hold that no problem at all. The arm itself is very, very stiff, so it can be quite a bit of work to get it into the position that you want. But once you've got it into the position that you like, it's more of a sort of set and forget installation. It's not designed to be frequently moved around or frequently adjusted. So, you know, if you're looking for something like that, this probably isn't the arm for you. You know, you just install it, put it wherever you like, and you leave it, simple as that. It clamps very well to any desk that uses a standard sort of square cutout. Um, you know, if you have a different type of desk, I'm not really sure if it will work, but yeah, I just have it clamped to my IKEA desk and yeah, it works really well. It tightens using a sort of screw mechanism that you can do by hand. You don't actually need any tools or anything like that. You just screw it by hand. But I have found, you know, once you've sort of adjusted the arm and put it to where you like, it can sometimes become a bit loose. So you might have to retighten it when you've done that. I have it positioned in the top left corner of my iMac. That's why I personally just like it. That's why I personally prefer it. But you can have it wherever you like, wherever you wish and you know whatever works for you. I also nearly forgot to mention, you should definitely go into the display settings for your Mac and adjust where the display is so that you know when your mouse moves off screen it smoothly transitions to the ipad or the second display you know just much easier to make sure that you can keep a track of your mouse but yeah that's pretty much it it's very easy to get set up it's very easy to use and it's just a fantastic way to get the most out of your ipad you know most of the time your ipad is probably sitting on a desk not being used or whatever else when you're at home or when you're working on your mac so this is a great way to basically just have a second display and get the most out of your ipad you know it's an expensive device why not get the most out of it so i hope you guys enjoyed this video follow me on instagram and twitter and subscribe for more